Hello and welcome everyone. So today's topic as many of you have been requesting me regarding the composition, how to write a composition, how to score good marks and that so many emails have been dropped in my box, so many comments in the box. So I thought that we should better do it because your exams are also drawing near and we better start off with it on a fresh day. So let's begin with this composition. All sorts of composition we will do in one single video. This can be a long one because you know there are a number of things we need to discuss, isn't it? While we are uh, while we are doing it, uh, that what are the things that we should follow in this? What are the things we should not follow in that? So those things we will discuss. It will be a little longer, so have patience and uh, let's get started. Ways to write a perfect composition, essay, or short story. So all of it, how to write, we are going to discuss in this video. Let's move to the first one uh, for today's topic. First one is descriptive. You see what is this of course an essay paragraph or not paragraph composition. We have to write a number of paragraphs. So we will not call it a paragraph. How to write a descriptive essay? You see I tell you, I first read some paragraphs and accordingly explain what is required. Listen carefully so that you can write um, or, or um, write a very good paragraph, uh, sorry, composition, essay, description, descriptive essay. This is of course coming from the word description. Now is what description. So here what you have to do, you have to describe in detail about certain things. Description should be one which makes the reader experience almost exactly what you did when you saw the place or person you are describing. In order to experience the effects of a place, we usually are open to the impressions formed by our five senses and so when you describe something, write about sounds, colors, shapes, textures, tastes, smells. Number one, write in your notebooks. How to write a descriptive essay? Use all your senses. It's not that what you saw. Isn't it? Generally what mistakes we will make is, we will write what we see. But we can over here utilize everything. We can even talk about the smell that we got. Maybe something is cooking in the kitchen. That smell that you have got, you can write about that too. So colors, shapes, textures, what you felt when you touched it, some very cold sensation through your body as soon as you touched the mobile phone, something like that. Whatever touch, feel, sense, whatever you have, you have to use that. Next, number two, don't use vague adjectives like good, bad, wonderful when describing something because those adjectives mean different things to different people. You cannot just say it was a good idea, it was a good plan. But describe the plan. Why was it a good thing? Understand? What are you, what are we trying to do? I can't say this toy or the soft toy is a very beautiful one. It's not that. I will, when I, when I touch it, I feel there is a kind of, you know, it is very soft. It feels it is smooth. It is just melting in my hands and I just love to keep patting it. This is the way I will describe. I will not say that, okay, this is a good soft toy and I will I'll just finish off with the explanation. All right. So he had a head of thick bushy hair, dark and curly. We'll describe how was the hair, how was the spectacles, how was that, uh, how was the laptop. Whatever you are describing, detailed description it needs to be. Next, try to use few similes and metaphors. We have all learned similes and metaphors. You can use that too. However, just too little description is less than life. Like too much can make your work meaningless. Look, imagine you are reading a paragraph and it's complete description going on and on with descriptions. One curtain that also you go on describing how that curtain feels in your hand. That is too much. Some main characters you describe. When you are talking about uh, a visit to Goa. So if it is a descriptive one, if you are describing that visit, then you have to describe the whole, what you felt when you visited that place, what you felt when you visited and sat by the beaches. All that you have to write. But not the insignificant one. Not just somebody, I mean, unsign not a, a less significant or insignificant character you keep explaining it's not that if you boarded a bus which is uh, something different when i visited bangalore from hyderabad uh, there is a uh, this is called i think uh, uh, orange bus you see there are a lot of amenities okay there is uh, the tv there is uh, this and that there is a lady uh, captain who will come for, for help any need that you require so all that so when we are writing about it we will describe it de in detail it is not a good bus all the amenities, how you felt, what you saw, what you smelled, all that uh, you have to write. An important fact is to remember to keep your eye on the topic and not to stray. Don't divert from here to there to there there. Just what you are writing about, you have to be careful about that. Follow that line. This can, when we start writing, you know, it sometimes so happens that we will keep writing and uh, we, we will just, uh, you know, 
move us straight from what we started to learn. Next. An important factor, okay, next one is, uh, that's all. This can be prevented by planning ahead. If you plan your action that what you are going to write, who are the main portions of your uh, topic, then you will not divert from there. This is all about descriptive. So if we just uh, sum this up, first one is, uh, we are talking about, uh, number one is it has to be very detailed. Complete description, smell, sense, uh, uh, touch, texture, everything we will write. Second, we will not divert from our topic. Third, uh, we can use some simile and metaphor like a lion-hearted man. Lion-hearted man, if you are describing a particular person, the bravery, you can use that. So these, these are all that we can write for a descriptive um, essay. Okay, so this is done. This is number one. Number two, we will move to narrative. Narrative, narration should be there. How will you write that? Narrative composition is basically a sequence of events. We have to remember it has to be one after the other, a sequence of events. Sequence should be clear and narration lively. If the narration is interspersed with brief descriptions um, and conversations, they make the narrative vivid, realistic and immediate and these qualities are the yardsticks by which the impact of a narrative may be measured. It has to be, so this one you can write it down, that narration is interspersed with brief descriptions. Brief descriptions and conversations is important. Some description, some conversation going on between two person. Okay, so this way we will keep it interesting. If it is constant, imagine I write, I first go to take a bath, then I sit with my laptop, then I prepare the PDFs, then I start speaking. Too boring it seems. So we can use some conversations. Okay, then again we can move into some some uh, detailed detail of that. Then again we can move to conversation dialogue that we can include in narrative. Next. Uh, we will talk about next is style is in the narrative composition more than in any other you must vary uh, the patterns of your sentences it gets very boring to read 50 or 60 sentences with the basic pattern of subject verb object basic pattern of subject verb object same thing and this is a this is a kind of sequence no so i keep on writing first i go to the washroom then i come from i, I again sit with my laptop i again come and uh, start recording the video. So I again, I again do this, I again eat that, I again drink that. Very boring it becomes. So you change the sequence. Sometimes you write from the passive format, some active. Uh, after having my lunch, I sat with my work. Uh, having finished the work, I thought I had nothing else to do. So I was thinking whether I should sleep or drink some water or watch television. You understand how I change the sentences from simple, complex, compound. Okay. Play with it. A flashback technique can be used with certain moment one looks backward in time, but this should not be done too many times. Finally, it is a good idea to have a unifying focus in the narrative, though it is not essential to go in for detailed characterization. So characterization, you can explain the characters of course, but yes, then again also remember that uh, you can add flashbacks, you can give a detailed description of the character, you can use certain conversations, make it short sentences, you can change from complex to compound, compound to simple sentences. Change, don't keep the pattern same. Same, I am doing this, I am doing that next, I did that next, not like that. Change it from active to passive, play with simple complex compound. Flashbacks, when you are writing, you can talk about something that had happened in the past. Okay, Sudden, suddenly when I was sitting and doing and staring at the walls because I had nothing to do, I suddenly remembered one of the moments of my past. Uh, it was my friend who was uh, very annoyed with me one day because I had uh, I, I had stolen something from him. I had spoken rudely to him. Something something of a flashback you can have. But once or twice, not many times in your uh, narrative um, essay. Okay, so that is all about our narrative essay. Next, let's move to our argumentative one. Argumentative. What is this? Argumentative essay is something where you have to talk about only one thing. Okay. So, argumentative main reason for writing an argument is to persuade the reader to believe in your point. What is important is that one must not start out professing one views towards the topic and end up supporting the opposing one. So, it, it cannot be that you are, imagine you are told whether you should uh, wear uniform to school or not. Or you should go in civil dress. Which one? So, when you are talking, when you are supporting this thing that you should wear it, wear a, wear a proper uniform to school, at the end you cannot support something that is different. You have to follow one only. You have to support one. 
you must far, far, first explore and interpret the meaning of the topic for argument. First, you have to understand what is, for example, science um, has made us lazy. First, you have to think what it actually wants to point out. What are the two portions? Science, that means all those we have to think. There are all these technologies, these mobiles, these computers. This has made our work easy. And we tend to, you know, even a mop. Previously, we had to, we had to wash and clean our room. Nowadays, there are electric mops, there are robots who will work and clean the house by themselves and even carry the dust and uh, you know dispose. So that is that has become so easy and that has made us lazy. So this is what. Or you can say no, it is it hasn't just made us lazy, but it has given us a number of things. Which one do you support? First you think what are the two portions? What are we to support over here and write against? Next, uh, intellectual, okay, physically, what, what is it? Is it in making us, is it talking about being intellectually lazy or physically lazy or socially lazy? What kind of lazy it is? After you have clarified your approach, you can start writing. Uh, you have to, at each stage of your argument, use an illustration or example, most important. Use examples because vague philosophical ideas, you know, make no sense. When you are writing that it is good, it is bad, that does not make any sense. You have to support that with proper examples. That yes, this is the reason why I support it. This is the reason why I do not support it. Because that can lead to these harms, these many problems. So you support it, one one support, that you are, the way you are justifying your topic, you write those paragraphs separately. Divide your paragraphs according to that. Change your lines and it. So that's all about your argumentative essay. Two points. One is, you have to be very careful what you are supporting. You cannot support both. Second, you have to justify your answer with proper examples dividing your paragraphs accordingly. Don't use, don't write both the justifications in one paragraph. Show that you have given so many justifications. Okay. And then a concluding line. Next, we will move to autobiographical and we will come to short story also. So, first let's move to autobiographical. What is autobiographical? The very, very few times you will, I have seen, you do not opt for this autobiographical. This is something where you have to talk about uh, Think, uh, talk about somebody or something, thinking that person or that thing is you yourself. Like for example, a uh, mixture of, uh, of whatever topics we have discussed, that is everything. So here, uh, some mistakenly think that this is such an essay, one can write anything one wants but to what. In fact, this type of essay needs organization most of all. So what experiences have most enriched your life? If you are told to talk about friendship, if you are told to talk about walls, you have to talk about them thinking that you are that particular person, you are that wall or you are that person. How you have lived uh, your life or the uh, autobiography of a tree, how that tree lives, you have to feel like a tree and accordingly you have to get. For years and years I have been rooted to one place. This is what the tree does, isn't it? It is rooted to one place. How does it feel when I, uh, when I just, uh, how does it feel to you when you have to be rooted to that place? You will not think you as a human being. You have to think that you are the tree talking to a human. Would you like it? Would you like to be rooted in one place and just not be able to go to malls, to halls, to parks and everywhere? Just rooted to one park, staring at the open sky. This is what you will start. This is what you will begin with. Okay, introduction for a autobiography of a tree. So I hope you've understood how to frame it. Next short story. Last one for today. Short story. How to write a short story? Now I will always tell you, although there is a written record that you may write a short story. I will suggest to not go for it because you see it is very difficult to um, uh, to understand what to write, to make the plot, to devise the plot, then go about what would be the characters, think upon that story so much and then finish it off within 25 minutes. That is kind of next to impossible. So this is extremely difficult to write in 45 minutes because it should not be only a narrative but a story. It's not a, you cannot just keep on writing. There should be dialogues, there should be friends, there should be narrators, there should be a proper uh, description, everything. So I would say that the, the surprise ending, the climax, all this is something which is difficult even for a writer to write in so few, such a few minutes. Uh, if the theme is given, it is comparatively easier to build a story. Another danger is that the instructions, the most important thing is sometimes what happens. Sometimes your story may match something that you have seen. Okay. So then this would be kind of incorrect. Okay. You will lose a lot of marks if there is any resemblance with any other story or movie. So I will tell you it is preferable not to write a short story. And uh, that's all. 
So a short story is also done and if you have any doubts how to frame anything else, do write to me in the comment section and I will always be just one step ahead to help you. So that's all. Let's uh, meet in the next video and I hope you will sit for the exams and you will do beautifully and wonderfully. And that's all. If you have liked it, if you have followed it and if you have got any help, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.